Uh, this video um, should have as little preamble from me as possible. Uh, I'm a, what I'm about to show you is a, an interview that I did at Hooverville 7 with Terence Dix. Uh, I only ever released the audio at the time because the video angle wasn't particularly good, but seeing as I'll never get to meet the guy and interview him again, um, I thought I might as well give you all that I have. Um, so here's my interview with Terence Dix and I'll be back again after it to um, say some more words if you're still around at that point. Terence, welcome to the Mining Doctor podcast. Tell me about your convention experience today. How's it been? It's been fine. Um, I've been very busy, which is not a complaint. Um, I tend to complain when I'm not very busy because the time dead. But, um, you know, I, I've been busy with uh, autographs and photographs have been, have been a lot of it. And then autographs, photographs and podcasts. Yeah. So lots of, uh, you know, most... I don't think I had any period when I had nothing to do. In fact, even when I was downstairs having lunch with Richard Franklin, somebody came down and said, you're supposed to be doing autographs. <laughs> Far from uh, spare time, but I mean, it's, you know, the day's gone very quick. And the fans are very nice. They've really got a very a nice bunch of fans. And people have been nice about the books, you know. And, the thing which I've heard lots and lots of times, it's always special to people saying, you taught me to read, you know. Somebody said once, you, I, owe you your, I owe you my childhood, you know, and that, that's very gratifying. And a lady came and said her, um, I don't know, little daughter or granddaughter or something has started reading Dr. Hoover, you know, so it's still going on from generation to generation. So all that time is very nice. That's fantastic. Do you find that you um, keep telling the same stories over and over again. It's mentioned. a danger, you see. <laughs> it, it really is. Um, I've obviously got a repertoire yes. know, over the years, um, and it's nice to, you know, to try and... It depends a bit on the question for us. Yes. Um, when I did um, uh, the Doctor Who magazine did three very long interviews. Yeah. And uh, the chap, the writers who did that, two very nice of the writers, and they said they were they were they were aware of the danger of bringing out a series of world war anecdotes, <laughs> which gave me a slight pain, you know. But, yeah. uh, but you know, over the years, you see, I mean, there's, it's the same experience. There's only so much you can say about it. Yeah. But I mean, I picked up a little new thing the other, the, the last one I did at Barton. Um, well, it's the one where um, I, I've got this tale about the five doctors, um, in which Eric Sayward is a protagonist, as it were. He features largely. And Eric Sayward was there on the panel with me, you see, so I, I had to tell the story in which he featured. And I softened it slightly, you know. I said, when I went to see him in. Uh, you know, about writing it, uh, and I said his manner was somewhat shifty, I normally say, and I said he seemed a little uneasy when he was there, uh, that, that kind of thing. But uh, Eric, Eric was, I said to Eric Hoffman, look, if any of this sounds like nonsense to you, or you violently disagree, just speak up, you know, because um, it was a long time ago. And, and he was very funny, he said, you have told this story before, and I said, yes, Eric, many times, <laughs> many, many times, and he said, well, it's a good story, well told. That's why I think that was very generous of him. Oh, no, the thing I was going to say, yes. he told me, which is that when we were writing The Five Doctors, yeah. um, because of all the chopping and changes, um, there were lots of little rewrites. And he, um, I used to do them by writing in hand on strip pages and sending them in. Yeah. And he said he could never read my writing. <laughs> but he found a, a, a girl at the BBC who had done a lot of typing for me and learned to read my writing. Yeah. So he said whenever I sent something in, he'd take it to her for a translation yeah. and then she'd tell him what I'd actually said. So that was, that was a little snippet of new information. Right. You're still writing stuff, I 
Yeah, very little. Very little. Very little. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't like the word retirement, you know. <laughs> and I always say, if a job comes along, you know, I will probably do it. Yes. But if it doesn't, yeah. I don't care. I mean, I've never been fond of work, you know. So <laughs> I don't chase it. I don't have, and I don't have to chase it now. Thank, yeah. thank goodness, you know. So um, you know, I mostly trundle along. Uh, watching television and reading and doing the occasional convention. Yes. That was my moment with, with Terence. Uh, well, one of two. My, my other moment was, was at a, an event at the BFI where um, I was essentially forced to rebuy one of my early Target books so he could sign it. Um, I think it just says to Luke, Terence Dix. Um, and I, I've never even read this copy. It's just, it's just so that I can get his autograph. And I'm not really one for autographs either. It just felt appropriate for him. Um, this was one of the very first Doctor Who's I watched, um, and I would have read the book shortly thereafter. Um, he was such a, he was such a gifted writer and, and retailer of, of Doctor Who. I've just got a couple more here. I, I could probably talk about each of his books, but um, the Claws of Axos. Um, the reason I um, point to this one again, it was an early, it was an early purchase. This one um, picked up from Barter Books in Northumberland on a, on a holiday, and whereas m most of my recollections of reading these books have been replaced by having watched their TV versions, I still very clearly remember the images that his description of Bill Filer discovering Axos conjured up in my brain. Um, Mainly because they were so much more interesting and wonderful than the, <laughs> than what we got on TV, um, particularly so I think, and and so for that I will be forever grateful. Um, and then uh, perhaps an, a slightly odd choice, um, given that the Armageddon Factor is one of the the least good stories in the Key to Time uh, series. Um, I definitely read the hardback edition of this from my local library. Uh, and I reviewed it. It was my choice of book to review for my fellow Year 6 classmates when I had a chance to review a book. And I, I bored them with the, with the plot and didn't do much review, but, but I distinctly remember it. And like so many TV stories that were somewhat poor in their execution, I really, really loved this one as a kid. Um, and maybe I'll, maybe I'll read it again. Um, last time I tried to watch it, I didn't get past part one. Um, and that's, I don't know. There's so many things you could say about Terra Sticks, um, but his ability to take stuff that was a bit duff on TV and make it anew and, and fresh and, and good, um, I'll always be grateful to him for that, um, amongst so much else that he gave us and he gave me as a, as a Doctor Who fan. <laughs>